I believe that um, fear describes a great deal of what's going on in our culture today. And it shows up in places where you wouldn't necessarily say, oh, that's fear. Uh, depression is a kind of fear. Uh, and there, there just seem to be an awful lot of fearful people. And I do believe we're in a culture of fear. Everywhere I've gone these last uh, few months, people have expressed in one way or another their fear. And it's not just one thing. I mean, there's so many things out in our culture today that are creating fear in the hearts of people. And uh, one day I realized the Bible just has a lot to say about that. In fact, it may have more to say about that than just about anything else. The most often repeated command in the scripture is fear not. And uh, I remember one day discovering that there were over 200 people in the Bible about whom it says they were afraid. So while we face fears today, it's not the first time that's ever happened. Uh, this goes way back. It's a part of our culture. It's uh, the word fear appears in the early words of the Bible and the Bible has a lot to say about it. So I thought I would be a great thing, maybe a tool that would help people to just ransack the scripture and find out what the Bible has to say about all the kinds of fears that people are having today. And we started in the book with the fear of disaster. And it was, it was interesting because I had barely put my a, a pen to the paper when another disaster happened right in front of me. It seems like we've had more of those in these recent years and they've been more intense and, and, uh, and, and more hurtful. And so people are afraid, well, what if that happens to me? And uh, then we talked about disease and with cancer and all of these other things that are out there looming and everybody knows somebody who's been touched by it. What if I get sick? And what if I, uh, what if I lose all my money? What if I go into debt and I can't get out? Uh, all of these things which haunt the hearts of people. And the Bible, interestingly enough, almost has a poster child for every one of these fears. Uh, for instance, uh, there's a lot of people are afraid of depression, and there's Job. A lot of people who are afraid of disease, and there's Hezekiah. People are afraid of, uh, of uh, rejection, and there's Peter. And you just go through the scripture, and there's somebody who illustrates how they dealt with fear. And so as I wrote this book, I wanted to bring all this together and tell their story, so that by telling their story, maybe their story would encourage people who are afraid. And I believe we've been able to do that and we're praying God will use it. We spent the first nine chapters telling people not to be afraid and then the last chapter tells them they should be afraid because the last chapter is about the fear of God. And that's a really interesting subject. In some respects, it is, uh, it's the answer to all of the other nine fears because if we have the right and healthy fear of God, then we don't have to be afraid of anything else. If we really believe God is in control and if we're in such awe of Him that we know nothing is a surprise to Him, that there aren't any oops in God's vocabulary, then we never have to be afraid no matter what because we know God's in control. My prayer is that as people read this book, and they identify with the people from the Bible in this book who overcame their fears and faced them honestly, that they'll have a sense of victory in their life and that they can put some of those fears on the shelf and get on and live for God. And, and others who may not even know God will discover that there is a resource that is available to us in our Creator. And if we get connected with Him, He's promised to be with us so that we don't have to be afraid. Thank you.